Hello and welcome to the EFN Presents review of Season 4, Episode 14, Philly Vanilli. Joining me today from KPNY is Hardcover. Hello. And Screwloose. Hello, everybody. Unfortunately, some scheduling conflicts arose this last week, so we are recording this after the airing of the next episode, Twilight Time. A whole fortnight away. That would be two weeks, it's only been one week. But because of this delay, we've had the opportunity to talk with the wonderful Amy Keating Rogers, the writer of this episode, to hear some of her thoughts on the episode and how it's been received by fans. So, let's take a look. Amy, thank you for this chance to discuss uh, your latest episode, Philly Vanilli. Oh, absolutely. I'm happy to be here. And unfortunately, it seems that there were some people <laughs> who had some concerns with certain aspects of, of the episode. Yes. Uh, one of those happened to be, I guess, a, a regression of Fluttershy's character because oh. we saw Fluttershy <clears throat> being her naturally timid self. Mm -hmm. She didn't want to get up in front of the crowds to, to sing. Right. And people were drawing comparisons to episodes such as Hurricane Fluttershy mm -hmm. and uh, Green Isn't Your Color. Mm -hmm. So how do you balance character growth throughout mm -hmm. the seasons and the episodes with keeping those characteristics which really make the characters who they are? Well, I think that I know that all I can compare it with is, is being a human being. And even though I've experienced things as a human and learned things as a human, I still have other problems with them, uh, you know, different aspects. Uh, even though I was brave at some point of my life and did something, that doesn't mean I'm always going to be brave. Um, I think, um, and, and specifically in this instance, it's about singing on stage, which I don't know how many people out there who are being, who are being critical about this um, have sung on stage, but I've, I've heard some criticism of, oh, she was on stage in Hearts Warming's Eve. That's also different because um, I, was, I was actually talking to my daughter about this and she's a performer. I used to perform and acting and knowing your lines as an actor is one specific thing. And I'm not saying you don't get nervous about that, but that's one specific thing. Standing on stage and singing is a whole other kettle of fish because you have all these other fears that come with it. like. The main one is going off key. I mean, you can forget your lyrics, but the, you don't want to sound crappy. You don't want to sound. You don't want people to wince at what you sound like. Um, and so, to have Fluttershy have that fear seemed like a natural thing. And yes, she was brave in Hurricane Fluttershy, and yes, she modeled. But those are very, very different things than yes. getting up on stage and singing. And so that's that's how. It's that she is by nature a shy character and so just because she learned it you know dealt with it in different situations doesn't wash that away you are, she isn't cured of shyness yeah. she it's in her name for yeah. hate's sake she is flutter shy yes. not you know once once she dealt with some issues she didn't become flutter brave she you know she was still who she was and she was comfortable singing amongst her animals that weren't judging her they would never judge her there is a certain amount of judgment that happens with singing. I mean, that's why people love watching the American Idol auditions, right. is they love seeing people just suck and and make fools of them, not make fools of themselves, but wow, I sound so great. And like, oh, really? I don't really sound that great. Yeah, they have entire episodes with just the really bad right. auditions right. Because for, them, that's, for that reason. Right, and, but yet those people think they sound good. Otherwise, they're not getting up there and, and putting themselves out there. They, they don't have the shyness problem and they're not afraid they, because they're so secure in what they think they sound like. She sounds lovely, but isn't secure in expressing that. Right. Well, that was one thing I wanted to, to follow up with regarding the other episodes, is that when she's modeling, there really is no creative input on the part of the model. It was really just her fear of being the center of attention, being up in front of people. Right. Right. And with Hurricane Fluttershy, there is a performance to an extent, but it's not a creative endeavor right. like, like singing is. Yeah, people yeah. people judge you harshly when you sing. Yes. And, and people can be, if you do a good job, people can be incredibly complimentary. But I know when I used to uh, sing on stage, you know, and now I happen to be singing on stage uh, when I go to conventions, um, but back... Um, back when I used to do musicals, um, I remember um, 
after I graduated from Occidental, I did um, summer theater and I did, I was in Yeoman of the Guard, which is a Gilbert and Sullivan. And it ended up that song, the songs that, uh, that my character sang fell really high in my range. And it made me so nervous every night, despite the fact that I did like 10 performances, 12 performances, every night I was scared. It didn't matter that I'd done it the night before and not forgotten my lines and it hit every note and all of that. Every night I was scared. Well, did any of those personal experiences, I guess, influence your writing of the episode? Absolutely. I mean, I, it's, it's funny because the episode actually wasn't originally about her being too shy to perform, um, as far as what I pitched in the premise. It was her, um, it was her, you know, the, she needed a deep voice. It kind of was structured different when I pitched it. It was that actually Fluttershy was in charge of the pony tones and she um, needed a deep voice to round out the sound. She uh, ended up walking by uh, Sweet Apple Acres, hears Big Mac singing in the fields and goes, oh my gosh, Big Mac could sing in my group. And so she went and recruited him and he was part of the group and it was all great. And then the night before the performance, he loses his voice. Um, and so she actually came up with the idea of taking the poison joke and singing and but then she got the fear that oh when I'm on stage everybody's going to laugh at me because I'm singing with this deep voice right. so it was a totally different take on it and then as we had the story meeting you know I pitched it and uh, and they, they liked kind of the um, the general idea of it but then um, as we kicked it around um, it became a much better episode to have Fluttershy want to help the group, um, but then hide behind the curtain. And then you have the whole kind of s the singing in the rain element going on there. And so it, the, the episode evolved into Fluttershy being, you know, desperately wanting to sing and, because she loves singing. But so many people, they love to sing in the shower, but they're not going to get up on stage and do it. And that's actually, when I originally wrote the scene, Fluttershy was in the first opening scene, Fluttershy was in the shower. And that ended up changing. Um, but that comfort of singing when, as if nobody is ever going to hear you, right. is one thing. And then for her to have to go on stage, one, now she would, it's not only her going on stage, not, you know, and that's scary. She would also be She's seen singing, you know. with a with a dude voice. Yeah. So that you know that's awkward. Mm -hmm. So all these you know kind of different layers made it that much more interesting and fun of an episode. And once it became about that, in answer to your question, yeah, I put in, you know what you know Pinkie Pie's rant as you know everybody calls it, and you know has gotten all bent out of shape about, are exactly the fears that you feel that you feel when you're going to go on stage and sing. You know, is everybody going to judge you? Um, and then when I choke, you know, there's going to be an angry mob. Of course, that's not what happens. You know, there's rarely angry mobs around. But um, that you begin to just get so in your head that you freak yourself out. Like, oh my gosh, I'm going to do such, you know, I'm just not going to do a good job. Or people aren't going to like me. And, and that kind of stuff is what goes on, you right. know, in my head. That, you know, that can totally psych your, you can psych yourself out to where you're not, you know, you, your throat begins to tighten and you become kind of your own worst enemy at that point. Yeah. Just one note on, you mentioned the original pitch for the episode, mm -hmm. and that still included the poison joke, so yeah. was the whole Flutter Guy voice, that was actually an element that existed before? It was, it, when I pitched it, the title was The Return of Flutter, Flutter Guy. So yeah, that was what my kind of original idea was. It was, we had this big, we have these writers' summits where a bunch of the writers come in and you come in and you hopefully have like three to five ideas that you can kind of spitball out there and throw up on the wall and see, you know, which ones people are responding to. And so, yes, that, and I, when I was coming up with ideas, um, I thought, well, what would be fun? It would be really fun for Fluttershy to speak as Flutter Guy again. Um, and so I just, I said, okay, well, what would be in a situation where... Where that would arise. Right, yeah. where that would arise, where it would be important for to, her to have that deep voice, blah, 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 blah. And you kind of go from there. Now, on the topic of, of Pinkie Pie, because you, mm -hmm. you brought her up and you brought up the rant. Yes. That's interesting in this episode. There are several other episodes that come to mind where mm -hmm. Pinkie had... I guess a, a similar role, one in particular that you had written was A Friend Indeed, right. where she was... 
I call her obliviously blunt. Yeah, yes, that's, that's, I'm looking for the right words there. <laughs> she was, and I think yeah. that that's how she came across in this episode, but it, it's strange because I really didn't hear any complaints from people regarding Fluttershy in those episodes where she really is being uh, consistent with her character, oh, which is with, at times... with Pinkie Pie? You yes, mean? Yeah. yes. Yeah, um... Yeah, I didn't think that Pinkie Pie was at all out of character. That seems that exactly within Pinkie's character to start on something and then she kind of, it's a snowball of, she starts with, oh, it's this and oh, it's that and oh, it's a da 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 until she's just, you know, just bleh. She's spit all this stuff out and and not realize the effect that it's having on the pony that she's talking to. Same thing, you know, in A Friend Indeed, you know, she she gets this toupee on her and thinks it's a spider and she's freaking out and then she realizes he's bald and then she's in the middle of town screaming, does anybody have a toupee for this really bald donkey? And that's pretty insensitive. And I know that people are saying, oh, but she didn't apologize for it in in this episode. Well, she, in her own way she did because she, again, she goes on her second rant um, and I think Rarity says, uh, or somebody, somebody says, um, uh, what Pinkie Pie means is this. And she says, isn't that what I oh, said? Sure. And and Rarity says, hardly. And and she's like, whoops. Oh, you did sound really great. You know, so she she realizes it and says, whoops. And, uh, you know, and says, you sounded really great, which is in, in certain ways an apology. An apology yeah. So I think, I think when she said, whoops, you did sound great, that was her way of saying I'm sorry. It wasn't the words I'm sorry, but that's what she intended with that and then a little bit later you know she says to them um uh, rarity says uh pinkie pie was right about one thing and she's like only, only one? one because she was right about everything True. she might not have said it in the kindest of tones yeah. and you know but that's her well, she's kind of like well, everything pinkie pie she does it in her own way and it's more often right than not but still out of the norm for most people yeah. and well, throughout the entire episode, mm -hmm. really, uh, Pinky is almost Pinky's ability to focus on the situation to the exclusion of the people it involves mm -hmm. allows her almost to speak freely. Mm -hmm. And at the beginning, you know, she goes off on that little rant about sort of what Fluttershy's fears of mm -hmm. the situation are. Mm -hmm. And is that sort of intended that Pinky has the ability to perhaps? vocalize what the other characters are thinking or in this situation what Fluttershy is thinking but Fluttershy as her, her character naturally mm -hmm. wouldn't vocalize her fears so right. directly that, that Pinky would yeah it's I mean Pinky is kind of saying what Fluttershy's internal monologue or internal fears are and it is because she's Pinky that she's able to uh, just kind of encapsulate that and blurt it out and sum it up you know maybe not as gently as she should have but uh, but that's Pinky she just kind of goes on a roll and and that's uh, yeah. that's just kind of who she is yeah. so from a episode point of view is part of the reason that Pinkie Pie is so direct almost a time economy thing that there's certain things have to be said and Pinkie Pie is the one that can say them in the least amount of time which actually leaves I, I don't think it's a time economy kind of thing I think it's just it fits within her character to kind of blurt things out and it's a convenient kind of thing uh, in certain ways, storytelling-wise, that you can kind of, uh, you know, if you have exposition that you need to <laughs> spill out, uh, you can, you know, you can make use of Pinkie Pie because um, she's the natural character to do that. But so, yeah, I guess yes and no, but it's not like, oh, we better put Pinkie Pie in there because she can fill in those details. Yeah. It just, she happens to be that character and it's really, uh, she, she works well in that way. Well, is there anything else from the episode that comes to mind that you wanted to bring up, Frank? Um, I, I mean, the thing that comes to mind to me is that it turned out a very, very, you know, it turned out the way I imagined in my head, which was fantastic. I thought that Andrea Libman did such a great job as both Fluttershy and Pinkie Pie. I thought um, Tabitha's rarity stuff was so amazing. One of my favorite things to write was um, the Big Mac and Applejack uh, summation where she, cause I was like, okay, well now everybody knows about this and 
what would happen? What would naturally, in my mind, naturally happen between, uh, you know, to to fill everybody in and just Applejack has seen those siblings re relate like that was a lot of fun to, to get to write. So there were so many little pieces of things that came together to and do a really uh, fun episode. Yeah. Oh, well, I think that's all the time we have. Okay. So once again, thank you very much thank for you. this opportunity to thank you for talk to me. you about the episode. Absolutely. Well, now that we've had a chance to hear some of Amy's thoughts on the episode and the reaction it's gotten, what was your guys' impression on this episode? I loved it. I, I, I still have the song stuck in my head. I'm in the exact same boat. I'm an avid Fluttershy fan. I've loved her since Griffin the Brush Off, which was the first episode that really made me realize how much I was enjoying the show. Uh, ever since I watched the episode, I was just like, they did so much with this episode, and I'm just, I, I was laughing every minute and dawing the next, and I, with the, without a doubt, say it's my favorite episode of the season so far. I, Big Macintosh singing, that, there you go. Exactly. As soon as he started, I had a feeling, though, that something was going to happen. I had a feeling he was going to lose his voice, and I was really mad when it did happen, and happy that I was right. It was weird. <laughs> Well, obviously there's some balance in this episode, which is important because it's got some tense moments for Fluttershy. She ends up in tears several times through the episode. And so it's nice to have some comedic elements, not to, I guess, make fun of what Fluttershy is going through, but to, to bring some balance for the viewer. Like we have the return of the Flutter Guy boys, and I'm going to say some of Pinky's antics in general. On that note, at first, before I uh, heard what uh, Miss Rogers had uh, intended, I originally thought that Pinky was rather rude. It was harsh. It was, it just, it was a little much for her personality. And I'm very glad she had the opportunity to give her intentions on that. Yeah, that, that actually reminds me of a picture I saw. Like Speaking of Griffin the Brush Off, when someone like made a picture that said, uh, Gilda makes Fluttershy cry, the fandom erupts, and Pinky makes Fluttershy cry, no one cares. This is completely different, though, for me. Gilda was rude and, for the sake of friendliness, just overall very, very mean. Uh, Pinkie Pie, as, as I've seen multiple people say, was voicing Fluttershy's concerns just very vocally, and it, in my opinion, it was like making Fluttershy realize what, what she was doing that was making her cry, rather than Pinkie being... Maybe she was a little bit insensitive, I guess, but in my opinion, like it, it was nowhere near the level that Gilda had. And anyone who says that Gilda was like, like comparing this to Gilda is like, don't even go there. <laughs> oh, absolutely. The intention of the character needs to be taken into account. And I think that having Fluttershy react so strongly to Pinky's words is important to understand just how affected she was by everything. It's not just the experience that's causing her distress, it's being reminded of the experience or even just having her fear described to her. And for this episode to work, I think you really need to see that, to see just where Fluttershy is coming from. So many people were, that I've heard were saying, oh, this is just a rehash, we've already heard this. No, we heard her ability to be brave, to stand up for herself. That's that's just being a strong, a semi-strong individual to stand up for yourself. What she's singing, that's exposing a very raw emotion to everybody. And I can understand why anybody would still be afraid of that. There is definitely a lot of justification for Fluttershy's actions here, but sometimes these fears are irrational. They don't necessarily need to be explained. Her friends are trying to convince her that she has nothing to fear, but she fears it anyways. And honestly, I think that a lot of the people that say we've seen this before don't necessarily have those particular fears because if you do, and I'm sure that Fluttershy would feel the same way, that she knows it doesn't make sense, but she still fears it anyways. And so to have Fluttershy continue to fear things, I think is more realistic and more true to the character than if she suddenly became Flutterbrave. Exactly. It's an illogical fear. For the most part, logic never really comes into play when it comes to one's fears. Yeah. I actually just really noticed something. It, it seems to me that 
there was like a huge character development going on since the episode where there was a similar reason, which was uh, Green Isn't Your Color, how Fluttershy uh, didn't like being a model and she didn't want to be in front of everyone. She, she still had the same fear of not being in front of everyone, but she had the desire to perform. And I think that's a sign of her character actually changing over the course of seasons. Because I, I don't think Fluttershy from like season one would, would have the courage to even hide in a barrel and sing to help that, that she does in, in this, in Philly Vanilli. Well, that's definitely true. And that's why I, looking back, I really like the way that the montage was done because it went from Fluttershy being apprehensive even to just perform behind the curtain. She had to be convinced she had to do it for the animals, which was a really effective way of doing that because just Fluttershy's character, she wouldn't be the one to say, no, I'm putting myself in front of all of my animal friends that I care about. But throughout that montage, it's more and more about her loving to perform, you know, whether it is the response that she's getting from people or not, uh, which is why by the time she ends up knocking the curtain down, it's because she's having (laughs) so much fun back there that she loses track of what she's doing and kind of knocks the the curtain down. Yeah, definitely. And as she gets more comfortable, she's putting more of herself into the role. There's more creativity, more improvisation, which you see those scenes of Big Mac a little bit nervous because he doesn't exactly know how to sing along with her because she doesn't know what she's going to say. And like ultimately, by the end, when she's singing with the group, even if it's just for her friends, they've actually incorporated the song she's singing at the outset of the episode into what she was singing with the group, whereas when she starts, she's literally just giving Big Mac's performance verbatim. It's really not her coming through, she's just filling in the role, whereas by the end, she is her own person, I guess. She actually comes out of her shell. She really realizes that this is her opportunity to... Nobody's watching her, or at least she can't see anybody watching her. And even when the curtain falls, she's still going full bore. And then when she sees everybody... Then she stops. And I do love that they were able to, at the very end, go, no, I really don't want to sing in front of anybody just yet. She was still able to say no. Exactly. Talking about character growth, she actually directly says no to Rarity when Rarity is saying, oh, now we can have you singing at this event with us. She just flat out says no, which is something I don't think season one Fluttershy would be as direct about. But that brings up the question of these episodes where Fluttershy is learning something new versus growth she's learned from things in the past. Are all these episodes where Fluttershy is facing something new, a new fear. Is that making fullest use of Fluttershy's character, or is it just using up all of the options the writers are going to have going forward? Would we rather have an episode that focuses on the growth she's made in from a previous episode, or do you think that those things belong in the background? It's just something that's included that you can spot the growth, but we're not actually directly focusing on it. I personally think that uh, seeing growth of the characters is something that shows these days, like, well, at least cartoons, don't really focus on. So I am loving seeing character development in, in this show. I'm loving seeing a, a lot of the stuff that happens from, using Fluttershy as an example, from being from afraid of dragons to standing up for friends. From being not assertive to overly assertive to being able to stand her ground when she realizes something's not right. And in this case, just being able to realize she loves singing, but still says, no, I just don't want to perform in front of a crowd. It is amazing seeing all, all this character development with, with her and other characters. And I'll be very proud of her when she stops wearing those hair extensions. <laughs> hey, hey, she wears hair extensions. Maybe she can be confident in her own self-image that she doesn't have to wear them. Well, hardcover, there definitely is a lot of character growth because of the lessons that the characters are learning in the episodes, but I guess my question was, can continued growth be as powerful as the original lesson? In this case, have an episode where Fluttershy has a bad experience singing in front of a crowd and has to fight to not regress in the progress that she's made in this episode well like i said earlier i'm an avid fluttershy fan so i would probably love seeing that that kind of episode happen 
but it would definitely be interesting to see mainly how the storyboarders and and, and the writers uh, how the writers go about it because that's how that's what makes a good episode it, it's not really what it's about it's really how it's written and i i can't say whether or not it would be amazing or bad but based on what we've seen it'd probably be really good we have seen this specifically in the episode hurricane fluttershy she was working hard she was getting good she thought she did awesome and then she didn't and she felt that she really was worthless and then through the magic of friendship uh she was able to realize hey you know what I can make a slight a difference just by myself. That is a very good point. I did not think of Hurricane Fluttershy as an example. Wow. Exactly. She tried her heart. She trained and trained and trained for a long time. And then she, she had like two points something wing power, right? Yeah, so exactly. That's a perfect example of, of seeing something that happens where a bad experience causes a regression, but she ends up having to get over it. And yeah, perfect example. So you think that kind of a regression would work better as the second act in a three-act structure? That's probably the best way to work it in if you really wanted to showcase that kind of misstep, because given all of the characters and all the show ideas, it's probably really difficult to justify spending an entire episode revisiting a particular theme. And who here thought that this was going to be a key episode? I did. I'm, where's the key? Where's the rainbow? Come on, really? Nothing? As soon as the curtain fell, I thought somehow that he was going to see something that, that was the key, like, like like one of the ends or one of the rings was going to fall off on the curtain and just roll to her foot. And I thought that was going to be one of the keys. That was like my immediate reaction. No! Well, the key episodes have really been focusing on the example set by the main six, not really the lessons that they're learning or their particular growth. In a way, it's more their affirmation of things that they already know. That and the stakes were fairly low. The only real repercussions after their initial performance were that other people couldn't have the Ponytones sing at their events. But I could definitely see them doing something along these lines for the key episode for the kindness element, because it could be Fluttershy's shyness that's holding her back from doing something very important for another individual, which would force her to reevaluate her fears and so she has to face her fears not because someone convinced her logically that she needs to do it but because she realizes that's the only way that she can help someone else yeah so what i'm really looking forward to is based on all the key episodes so far how it feels like the ponies are putting their elements to the test like how rainbow dash had to choose whether or not she was loyal to the wonder bolts who were her dream or to ponyville where she's from Rarity lost her generosity for a moment, I guess you could say, and realized I let my anxiety get the better of me, and now I'm not being as generous to my friends. Plus, there wasn't an error al alicorn in the episode. There have been a few. One of my favorites, though, was the freaking um, neon lights one, and uh, <laughs> it showed vinyl being neon. How I neither know nor care. But if you notice, each time the error is there. It's in the rainbow episodes. Yeah, that's what I've heard. Larson, what are you doing? They are interesting, but I don't think that they're really going to factor into the season arc because they're really not drawn attention to. And I think if they were important, they would make a bigger deal about them. Well, unfortunately, that's all the time we have for this week. Once again, I'd like to thank my guests, Hardcover. It was a pleasure being here, Ramble. Thanks for having me. And Screwloose. I'm Screwy. And join us hopefully soon for our review of Season 4, Episode 15, Twilight Time. This has been EFN Presents. Thanks for watching.